Hello and welcome to episode 28 of Seddon and Lacey's Comic Stash. That there is not Seddon, that's Will. He's Hello. our special guest for today. That one over there, that's Seddon. And he's here always. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of the furniture, whereas Will is special. And the person here is Christopher Lacey. Actually, we don't do that, do we? That's a really no. good point, Will. We never introduce Chris. So I make Chris do it all by himself because I'm mm. too lazy to mention his name. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm just here. Uh, so we are getting a kid's eye view on comics from the one kid that I know. My own. Yeah. But before we go into cross-examining the child. <laughs> it is time for our reading corners. Happiness is just around the corner. So we will leave the guest to last on the corner of reading. Yes. We will start with Mr. Seddon. I just want to say, what? I think that's a, that's a good look, Chris, saying we're going to leave the kid on the corner. That's what uh, all good parents do with their children, isn't it? Leave them on a corner somewhere. Um, <laughs> they'll, they'll find a way home eventually. They're like pigeons. I'm uh, even on the corner of the screen. That is true. You, We are seeing you in the corner of the screen. Um, reading corner. So um, this week I have been absolutely tearing into our Marvel Unlimited subscription. Um, and do, I did baby steps at first, but oh my God, I have read and read and read and read and read it has been a joyous time for me and i'm not even going to bang on about a 1980s captain america for once in my life because uh i read i know i know there'll be more of that next week don't you worry um i started to read a couple of different bits i, I thought come on let's vary it up a little bit and as a writer called donny cates who i have read some stuff off before that i really liked so i thought oh do you know what i'll go back to his first marvel stuff which is a little run on doctor strange and nice. i'll yeah and i'll try that and um with the first trades of of doctor strange i then read the second trade which completes his doctor strange run and then um at the same time I thought, what else has this boy done? Because I'll be honest, a little bit of a spoiler, I have loved it. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, so now I'm working my way through the Donny Cates first. Now, depending on when we release this, um, I'm not going to go into any more detail because we're going to try something a little bit different on the channel and we're going to release some short episodes, maybe some review episodes. So coming soon, you'll find out about my adventures in the Donny Cates Marvel Universe and see what I really thought about it. Um, Little spoiler though, there's a dog in it, so of course I loved it. Any yeah. story of a dog in, I'm there. But yes, so the comic stash shorts coming soon, coming soon, coming soon, and very soon, hopefully, possibly even before you've watched this video. So if they have come before you've watched this video, go to the channel, find those shorts, and find out what I thought about them. But other than that, um, I, I've got nothing else because it has been Donny Cates, Donny Cates, Donny Cates and Marvel Unlimited for me. So what have you been up to, Mr. Lacey, in your filthy, dirty reading corner? So I have been doing some freebie stuff, as I you know, usually do. Uh, I read Vincent Price Presents Number Zero and The Secret Lives of Julie Newmar Number Zero. These are Blue Water comics and these are freebies on Comicsology. And their four pages, then lots of pages of then concept art. These these do not make me ever want to read anything by Blue Water because I'm just like, you just don't give me enough to draw me into them. Well, I mean, like the idea of a secret lies with Julie Newmar. I, I, do, I mean, God, there must be someone out there who is a massive Julie Newmar fan to even conceive of it. And, but I, I'm more interested in the Vincent Price one, although I'm going to be honest. As soon as you said Vincent, I thought you were going to say Vincent Kennedy McMahon, because that's that's <laughs> what happens after I hear the term Vincent ever. But <laughs> and also, I have been smashing in Mr. Miller's Daredevil Volume One, which I won't go too much into because it's going to be an upcoming episode. And it's going to be a full stash episode, isn't it? We're going to dive deep into Frank Miller's Daredevil run, considered one of the classics of all time. And um, I, I'm going to say it now as a spoiler, rightfully so, as far as I'm concerned. Let's just say so far, it's good. It's not God tier. Oh, 
Wowzers. But we'll leave that spoiler for next time. Will. Yeah. What have you been reading? I've been reading a um a manga called Tokyo Ghoul. It's about uh it's people who are craving for human flesh. So they are humans themselves, but they crave for human flesh and then they kill more people. It happens, Will. Well, as soon as you hit about 15, that's when that happens. You start wanting to eat human beings. Me and your dad went through it at one point. Um, we got over it, though. We got over it. Yeah, and I've been reading, when we were on the tra- train journey to London, when we went to see Ghost, I was reading Batman the Court of Owls. I really liked it. And I actually... I. I only saw that my dad got up to no. It only on his bookshelf. It only um. I can only see up to six, but then he's going. There's twelve. They're all there. I can only see six. That's because the one between it is the joke. The one I told you about, where Joker does the other side oh, of it, and then they follow on afterwards. Okay. okay. But yes, I really enjoyed that, and I've been. I was really... going to say, did did you like it? Because because uh, Chris yeah. did did give me a little bit of a spoiler and showed me a picture of what you've been reading, and and me me and your dad are big fans of that Batman run, especially. So I'm really pleased that you liked it. Yeah, and i and this was like last week, but I've been reading Harley Quinn as well. Not last week, the week before. It was a couple of weeks ago when you were last there. Yeah, but I've I've been reading. Look, it was greatest hits of Harley Quinn stuff, and it was really good. Most of it was not Suicide Squad, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, can I can I quickly jump back to ask you? So, was Tokyo Ghoul good? Because I've seen yeah. a little bit of the anime on Wait. Netflix, but I've not read it. Oh, it looks pretty swanky. Yeah, I, I mean, there is, uh, not again to give away too many um, spoilers, but there are some plans in the works for uh, um, maybe some manga episodes coming up. So Ooh. maybe you can lend that to your dad at some point and uh, maybe we can have a crack at Tokyo Ghoul together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll be in. I'll, like, I'll enjoy that. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, that's all basically I've been reading. That's a pretty good uh, haul though, isn't it? I mean, you put me and your dad to shame because we often turn up and we've read one issue of something so you've been doing good it's the difference between you know school and work yeah yeah i think there is a bit of a difference there isn't there like some of us just don't get the time no no it's a tough slog isn't it being a grown-up so it is time for the reason we have you here okay young william are you gonna show you me so, what we want is mm-hmm. a modern child's opinion, views, outlook on comics these days. Well, so, and I was and I was going to say, Chris, before we do that, um, as generally people have to listen to us talk about it, and this is uh, Will's eye on the uh, comic book world, I thought it's only fair that. I changed the backdrop because uh, now, as far as I'm concerned, we're now in Will's comic stash. So um, got a bit of a Spidey, a bit of Hulk and a bit of Carnage playing in the background for you. So um, so over to you. Well, I really enjoyed like Marvel comics, like basically anything. I really enjoyed it. There's like a few things which aren't really too good. But like if you were to give me, I don't know, some Batman or I don't know Harley Quinn or Hulk or Carnage or Venom or any Marvel thing, I'd probably read it, wouldn't I, Dad? That's true. Though, with say school, do you see other kids reading comics and stuff in um, school these days, or they don't read them in school, but they do. Some people do read them outside of school, but they're mainly like they're mainly like like Avengers stuff, but they don't really read them in school. So are most people reading sort of stuff that ties into the film then? Yeah, like, I don't know, Civil War stuff and Captain America and well, we were. Stuff. That was one thing I was particularly interested in, because me and your dad have talked like quite a lot about this on a previous show, that when we were kids, that we didn't have the movies and it wasn't really the big thing in the world that it is now. And like, no, kids didn't really tend to read comics or talk about them um 
we've often referred to it as our dirty little secret. Like you almost didn't talk out loud. You talked about football and sport rather than talking about comic books. So, and I did hope, fingers crossed, that that had changed a bit in recent times with the movies being so popular and all the TV shows. Yeah, it has changed a bit, hasn't it, Dad? I don't know, I'm not in school. <laughs> well, it, ha- it I, has. I like been. to see that your son has just totally stitched you up by suggesting you hang around schoolyards. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you come to school. Dad, come to our school. <laughs> seeing as there are a few, like, seeing as we have, um, the, we have a massive library in our school, and there is a few comics, but they're mostly Marvel stuff. There's, like, no, I know, Star Wars comics. See, you know. that absolutely amazes me because when i was at school and we had a library as well oh you would not get a comic anywhere near it it was all um shakespeare jane austen and things like that i i, I was i'm a man out of time i should have been in school now <laughs> I, there's no Go way that they, they'd confiscate us a comic when i was a kid because they'd say it wasn't a proper book it wasn't proper yes. reading is what they'd say when i was a kid yes so obviously manga is a bigger thing these yes. days and obviously when we were and kids like and stuff, stuff yeah so you've yeah. got your anime stuff are are there a lot of kids that you see in school and stuff are they are they reading like manga and stuff yes or? there are a lot um i've brought in some manga stuff and the day i brought some in basically like 11 ish people brought in some manga as well they brought like most of them brought like my hero academia stuff which I don't really like, but I'm I'm, it's I'm a big annoying. I'm a big fan. I, I, I say I'm a big fan. I've, I've seen the first two seasons of the anime and I really liked it. And somewhere behind me, there's a ton of My Hero Academia pops as well. Uh, but oh. but finding them in the world of the amount of pops that are behind me is, is, would be tricky. But I might fish one out in a minute. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I quite liked it. But I think one of the reasons why I quite liked it is because it's superheroes. And as yeah. I grew up, like um, reading Marvel books and things like that, so when I was looking for some uh, mangas and some animes to watch, I went, "Oh, what do I like?" And I went, "I like superheroes." So that that led me to that. Um, I, although a mixture, it, I, I I went into that, and the other stuff I went into was more the horror stuff because I like horror movies and things like that. But um, do you? This is probably a hard question, but like I'll give it a go. Okay. Do you got any idea? Like probably. Why do you think like kids probably resonate with the manga stuff more than the, the the superhero and the more Western stuff? Because when I was a kid, there there really wasn't much manga. Like it only just started to be a be a thing. But it does seem to really grab the attention of kids more than probably the American superhero stuff does. I'd say the reason why is because they're bringing out the anime, no, like the animes and the TV series as well as the books. Yeah. Whereas when you were kids, you were saying what you only had like the comics. Whereas yeah. the, the mar- when when the movies, they were like after. So I think that's probably why manga has probably grows more. Well, we did um, an episode on TV and movies, and and uh, when we were talking about the eighties and nineties, well before you were born, before you were even thought of, um, we, we'd go like almost a decade, wouldn't we, Chris, between seeing a movie um, and and. You know, there were some really good animated shows. So, like, we had a really good Batman one, didn't we? We had a really good Spider-Man one. But even then, it was rare when we get it. So, yeah, I think that's probably a really valid point, is that people can watch it on telly and kind of read along at the same time. Yeah. Seen as, like, with my dad, he read the Batman stuff before you movied, didn't you? No, I'd, I'd seen some Batman, because Batman... They started releasing the Batmans at the same point as when the Batman films came out over here. And you also then had the 90s TV cartoon. Um, but this, this we had, so when, when me and Seth were kids, you'd get one TV series at a time yep. every year or two, like yep. one season. Whereas now, if you go on to Netflix or Prime, Prime or whatever, or we even like sign up for like a Crunchyroll, like on the yeah. uh, a- anime side, I mean, there's what like every quarter or like every three months, they release about sort of twenty five to forty new series on there, which most of them are based off of the mangas. So, what a time to be alive! Yes. So, something else that you know for you because obviously you do like to get the manga stuff 
Yeah. Obviously, you go to bookshops and you do that with your mum. Yeah. But when you come with me mm -hmm. and we go to the comic book shop, mm -hmm. what do you think are the different, the big sort of differences? Because if you notice, when comic we go to the comic book shop, there's never any other kids in there. Comic book shop. The main thing I think is in the comic book shop, more adults go now. Seeing as I think yeah. more kids aren't really interested in comics. But they're like more interested in like manga sides and seeing as comics are shorter, whereas mangas are longer. Yeah. And I don't know why, but ki people in my school love reading longer books than shorter books, which is confusing. And, and I think there's something right in what you say there. They're easy to get hold of as well, aren't they? Like you go yeah. to Waterstones and there, there's, you know, shelves and shelves of manga books and you can have a flick through and go, what interests me? Whereas... I know they have the, the, the collected um, the Marvel and DC stuff in there, but it's it's a lot less. I mean, we've talked about this quite a lot. I think the comic book world is really missing a trick. It, it's not getting this right. Um, it's it's not getting the kids to actually um, engage with this stuff. And and I think it's a big problem. And like, we're not, the thing that got me into it when I was a kid is they used to be in the news agents. So, you know, you go up to the news agents or, or like uh, the, the shop up the road or the Tesco's or something like that. And on the shelves, you would have all the Marvel, all the DC comics, and it just doesn't seem to be there anymore. And I think it's a real shame. Yeah, and like if you were to find anything, it would be like pops and stuff. You'd find pops on shelves where you yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't find like any of the like comics or anything. Do do you think? Obviously, it doesn't matter to you. You never pay for it. I'm not the pays for it. But <laughs> had to get that in there, didn't you, Chris? Do, it's like, do you think it's because of price, maybe? Because if you think, like when we went into abstract, yeah. Obviously, I I bought Killing Time, and that was a five because it was the, the new new one that's just come out. Yeah. And obviously, you got two older ones for a fiver. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, you've just got your. Tokyo Ghoul, Tokyo Ghoul book for the, eight quid. Yeah. And obviously that's a full, fullish story. Yeah, it's a 250 yeah. page. So do you think it's ba do you think it's because of the fact that the pricing, the pricing increases and well te technically I'd say you're getting more of a decrease in as like with the killing time. How many pages are probably in it? About 24, 25 probably, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Oh, I thought the killing time was like 200. No, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no. Yeah, then it, it's, I'd say the reason why kids are doing it is because, well, there's more pages and like you're getting more value for. So, the thing, so if you've got your, say, your pocket money and your pocket money was, say, 20 quid a month, yeah. mm -hmm. you could go in and get four brand new issues of something. Single or, issues, or get two Tokyo Ghoul things, or two something. Yeah, do you think that's why? I think I, I would. I think if I was a kid, I'd be wanting to get as much of it as I can for the money I had. So I think I'd probably look at it like that and say, I'd rather get a couple of manga collected editions where I know I'm going to get loads more story. For my money um, yeah and there's a little like manga at the end of all tokyo rules there's like a little like five or six page ma little story with it yeah like it isn't to do with any of the story but it's just like a little a addition standalone, yeah. yeah so probably a, a little teaser to uh get you to come back for more isn't it um, yeah because this is me like is is the price the pr uh, thing that puts people off now because as i said when we were kids, they were what fifty p. And as oh, I said God, to you yeah, a few yeah. weeks ago, I randomly found a Beano in the wild, and it was three quid now. Yeah. Whereas, I, and I wouldn't. I mean, I like, I know you said it, Chris, about you buying some of this stuff, but like I think it, if it was easier for me when I was a kid because my mum was buying it for me, and I think if I went to the news agents and there was ten issues of something that I wanted, um, she could afford it. Whereas I think if now I went, there's 10 issues of stuff, she would probably give me a clip round the ear and say, well, get a bloody job then. Get up the chimneys or something because I'm not paying 50 quid for that, thanks. Um, yeah, it, it probably is a real hindrance. Whereas when you were kids, it was like so much cheaper. And... Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. 
you know, you, you could get you could get like a, a couple of comics and some sweets and a can of Coke for less than a quid. It was amazing. Um, yeah, it sucks to be you now. I was like, whereas like a can of Coke on its own is like a quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we go into some more ins and outs of what you think of comics, we will take your what is your top three characters and why and we will start with number three number three my number three is probably the hulk because well he's basically just a super buff well he's a, like a weakling at first and then he's a super buff dude and i really liked like the little like um things when we went to the comic book shop and you got the killing time thing i got a i got a Batman and Robin and a Hulk and I really yeah. I, I enjoyed the Hulk much more and I think the reason why is because um like um there was no like at little advert type things in it whereas like in the Batman and Robin there was like the like every other page you'd get like an advertising thing whereas in the hulk there was nothing and it was longer even without without the advertising as well so you got more to it and there was a little story at the end as well so i, that... I, will, I was gonna say will on the hulk the nice thing about it is is there is and I, i'm a big hulk fan as well there is some brilliant 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 hulk, hulk comics out there and i think as you get older and the years go on and you want to read more, there is so much good Hulk stuff out there. So um, yeah. hang on to your love for that character because there is some brilliant stuff for you to read as you go yeah. forward. And you can read some of the old stuff and maybe some, if they do yeah. do any of the new stuff. Well, they, they, are, they are still writing Hulk to this very day. So you've got Probably what, even right 50 now. years yeah. minimum of Hulk. Yeah, yeah and, and you know, there is some rubbish in there as well. I don't want to say it's all good, but um, there is some brilliant stuff out there for Hulk. So, yeah, keep keep on him as a character because you can, uh, yeah, you can experience a load of great stories later on with him. Okay. Number two. Number two is Carnage. I really like it. I The main thing I really like about it is seen as I thought Venom was ba Venom and Spider-Man were basically standalones. But now I know that Venom and Carnage are basically enemies and technically friends. So I don't understand why they're friends and they're technically enemies. But I really, seen as I do have one Carnage um, um, comic, it's re it, I really like it. It seems it's basically um, Carnage basically beating up Spider-Man and then Spider-Man just beats up Carnage after. And then they just have a scrap and then Carnage runs away. Well, I will say like the the Venom story, like where he comes in and where Carnage comes in. And, you know, hopefully at some point you'll get to kind of read that probably on Marvel Unlimited or something like that. I think you'll really like it. Like the Carnage storyline, certainly the first one is, is fantastic. And as you say, he's got a really good look to him, hasn't he? Like he's a really exciting visual character to see. Yeah. Um, and, and again, he, he looks kind of, uh, well, I was going to say he looks kind of quite like he could be a manga character, which is maybe why it resonates a bit. But mm. having said that, he was probably designed before a lot of the manga characters were. So it's actually probably the other way around. But um, like you said about Tokyo Ghoul, he's got a similar visual to some of the stuff that's in the the animated or the anime of, of Tokyo Ghoul as well. So I can, I can yeah. see that. He is evil, though, Will. Remember this. Yeah. He is yes. a villain. Yeah, but like I, I mainly like villains more than like hit superheroes. I don't know why. Like you like, are, you are your father's son, clearly. <laughs> like my dad likes Joker more than Batman. But yeah, evil. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And who is your numero uno? Spider Man. Seen as I really liked the movies, like all of the No Way Home. Um, I forgot the rest of them. Homecoming. Is it Homecoming? Homecoming. Yeah, Homecoming. Homecoming yeah. All those. I really enjoyed them. They were really good. I liked how they um on the latest one. I I forgot what the latest one is called. What's the latest one called? No but, way home. No yeah, way home. Yeah. On no way home. Um, I liked how they I that they done all three of the spider all three of the Spider Mans. Like, I like how they actually put like the older stuff into the newer stuff of it. Like with, so like they put like. Um, I forgot the name. Wait, which? Garfield. Yeah, Garfield and Holland. Yeah, and yeah. Maguire. Yeah, 
but they put all of them like all together so i really liked it and it's that bigger universe thing isn't it it's, it's one of the things that made me really love um superheroes when i was a kid is when i found out that there were loads of other superheroes and obviously in the movies with spider-man and you find out that there are other spider-men and it just yeah. makes you kind of go oh i want more and there is more for me to experience well, it's like taking you in uh spider verse yeah, that was re I really I I loved when there was all of them. My my favorite was Spider Pig, so I have to. Uh, again, in good news, uh, Will, there are Spider Verse comics out there, and uh, all those characters. Uh, well, in fact, the movie is predominantly based off a storyline in the Spider Man comics. So um, we'll we'll we'll, we'll hunt them out for you at some point yeah. and get them your way for you to ever read. Thank you, but that I really like Spider Man because of like, well, he he. I like the backstory of like he got bitten by a spider. He got bitten by a spider. He got the superpowers. Like that wouldn't happen. Like in a ca in a casual story, you wouldn't get somebody get bitten by a spider. Or like say it was not Spider Man. Somebody get bitten by a wolf and then they turn into a werewolf. That would not happen. I've like, never let a, I've never let a spider bite me though, so I can't I can't prove that that wouldn't happen because I've never let one near me. So <laughs> who knows? It might. Yeah. maybe <laughs> but probably not probably so. not yeah you're probably right yeah but i really like it because of mainly those reasons and i mean we've talked about him before haven't we chris we've talked about spider-man yeah. and, and he is the everyman hero he is us all of us have got a bit of spider-man or certainly all male um like men have like we, we've all been peter parker at some point you know we've all like been sort of the geeky nerdy kids sometimes but then also felt like we were a hero inside and things like that and i think i think spider-man speaks to so many people and i don't think you're alone i think lots of people would pick spider-man out as their favorite hero and like despite there have been a couple of movies here and there that i'm not such a fan of i think they've done really well with him when they've put him into movies and and, and the animated series like certainly that that 90s animated series is is fantastic and absolutely amazing and there's one on disney plus which is quite good um the one which is um it's miles morales oh, yeah. as a kid um spider gwen as a kid and there's another one as a kid yeah i can't remember what it's yeah. called but i know the one you mean yeah and they've, yeah. they've got quite interesting kind of like little well i know it's animated but they've got a, they they design them a little bit different i thought they looked a little bit yeah. like um like they make really good toys which i guess is probably why they did it that way so, yeah. really good toys, but... so the little kids go oh yeah. toy yeah so we will come back to your t another top three in a little while. Okay. But do you think that? And obviously, this is just a new. You can't. You can't speak for every child in the world. <laughs> but do you think in modern world as we live in now, where you all have mobile phones and playstations and countless hours of streaming tv and anything and everything you could ever want to watch at any at the click of a finger on your phone do you think there is still a place for comics and stuff and do you think kids still will enjoy them and would get, look out look out for them or do you think everyone's just going more to oh look and watch the tv i'd say there is a little bit like like people would still like pick up a comic and still read it but it's seen as like you've got the apps on your phone where like you can like aren't know go on to safari and aren't know like purchase the comic whereas like you'd have to go out and buy it and people are just more lazy and and that's probably why like they download you no know, they made like the marvel universe things so then people just don't have to go out and buy the comics and it's good that they did put some free stuff on there, so then people still enjoy like reading the comics, but they are just still using their phone. And it's not like with the book, it well, like comic, it's like I'd say it's more enjoyable reading it, seeing as like you're gonna be like, what's over the next page. Well, it's, it was really good to see when you had that uh, Tokyo Ghoul there. You know, it is nice to see it. And, and I think you're right. I mean, I use a lot of the digital stuff. I do. I use um, a lot of those services now, mainly because of space in the house, but also price. 
but I think you're spot on. There is something about turning that page. You know, it does feel nice to turn the page and, and that excitement about turning that page. And I think sometimes in the, the digital world, it's not quite as exciting to, mm -hmm. to do it that way. And um, I find this bit quite hard, but waiting a month for the next part of the story. Uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, you don't, in, that, in this digital world, like, as I said earlier, I started to read the, these Doctor Strange comics. And if I'd have been buying them at the time when they were coming out in the shop, I'd have had to wait a month for the next chapter, whereas what I ended up doing was reading like about 13 issues of it on the bounce because I didn't have to wait, which was nice. But yeah, I think you lose a little bit of that excitement of going, oh, I, I now need to, what's going to happen next? Because yeah, you can yeah. actually just find out what happens next. Yeah, and you're like on a cliffhanger and you're like, oh, what's yeah. going to happen next? Yeah. I want I want to know. Yeah, so I've, I've got Killing Time too, and I've not read it yet. So I'm like, uh, do, do I, I wait? the whole lot or am i do i just just go in i'm glad um, you said that because i was really excitable on the day that um killing time two come out and i was like i am going to read this and as soon as i downloaded it i went no i think i'm going to wait for the whole series to be done and read it in one go um, yeah because there's to me it's like one of those of like because i read the first one first day and i was like yeah i'm in on this and i, right. I wanted to read the whole thing and because i'm so you because Obviously, we've spoken how I read most of my stuff. I get the collector's editions once it all comes out. Yeah. I never, unless it's something big, I don't go and get the, the monthlies or the, the bi-weeklies as they come out. No. So it's a bit, we, we are now of, I think the, the fact that we are now that sort of generation and yeah. mindset of the whole series the yeah. whole like you get thing, all ev of it. everything because how netflix drops yeah everything yeah. at once I, I mean I, I can i can hardly watch a tv show if it's weekly anymore i, I can't yeah. I, I i want to know that if if i want to watch the next episode it's there for me and then you get to the end of the series and you have that horrible wait of a year for another one but but i think even more than that chris i think for you and i and I, i'm pointing behind me i don't think you can see him for pops but i think one of the selling points for the collected editions as well is not only getting the whole story but it's owning them and putting them on your shelf isn't it because they do yeah. look really nice and you you know single issues are fine you can put them in long boxes and things like that but they were never something that you could just buy on the shelf you know you don't get those like kind of nice finds i mean we've, we've joked before about um i think when we did the top five most of my top five ones were still in their cellophane because I'd read them in other formats, but I got them in a really nice hardback collected edition, so they'd look sexy on the shelf. But so with you, mm -hmm. obviously you uh, read your your anime, your manga stuff, and, and your bits and pieces when you're at mine. Obviously, the one thing that we had this week when we went to the comic shop mm -hmm. was because obviously last time you went, you picked just picked a couple of randoms, and it was like uh, issue three of four and one, and of issue one five of, of six of, of another. You obviously then were like, "Oh, I want to try and find an issue one or something," because you couldn't find anything in the long box. You then didn't buy anything. Is that going to the comic book shop because obviously you sat there and you scrummaged through the the yeah. long boxes full of comics and you look like you were having fun trying to find stuff yeah but is it because you can't get because of them being older ones in the long boxes does that put you off going right i want to just go and buy a couple of comics because you want the whole story like it's not it's not like good seems well it, it it is so then like you get like the people who make it get more money but it it i think it's better to get the whole story at once seeing as like but true it it's kind of about sometimes having the whole story so then you you can get the whole thing and then you know what it is and like you can read it again if you ever want to but it's kind of that excitement of will you buy the next one is it that good enough to get the next one is it really that good and like that's why i'd say like well getting the whole series is sometimes better but then getting the single um issues is sometimes better as well 
when you go to the uh, comic shop with your dad, is there ever a time where it's almost there's too much stuff there? Because I remember um, the first time I went to a, a comic shop, comic shop. Now, don't get me wrong. I was the happiest kid on the planet because I'd been reading them for a long time. But I, I do wonder, like, you've got box after box after box of comics. And it must be really hard to even decide what box you're going to look in before you even decide what you might be wanting to buy from it. Like, is that potentially a problem when it's just too much for you to settle on something specifically? Well, there is a lot of stuff. There's like in the middle, there's like loads of, there's like lots. I think there's like over, I'd probably say a thousand just in the in the boxes. Like, and like you just go through them and then there's stuff on the walls and, yeah. and there's just so much. And like, first of all, how would they get that much money to buy all of the comics? And well, yeah, it, there's sometimes there is like too much, but then sometimes it looks like there's like seen as on one of the times when we went there, one of the things wasn't even full. One of the yeah, but it's probably because someone went in and raided it. Yeah, no, 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 and bought all of the issues that day. Um, and also, I was going to ask when you go into the comic shop, what mm -hmm. is it the character that like kind of draws you into something or is it the cover because we've talked about this before about like kind of what is it that makes people buy comics and uh, obviously the cover is a really big thing because it's the, the first thing you see and the only thing you see or, or do you think you more look for a character you know rather than even getting drawn in by the cover most of the time it's the character seen as like if you were like like with the hulk i went i went to i think i went spider-man but they didn't have like anything really which I wanted. And then I went to Hulk and I just picked a random one and I liked it. It was yeah. really good, but yeah. But was it because it was, it was, mainly... was it because it was just Hulk or was it because the, the front cover you looked at and went, it was that Hulk. one looks cool. It was literally just because it was the Hulk. Okay. Seen as like, I don't know, with the Batman and Robin, I just picked a random Batman and Robin, didn't I? Yeah, but again, was it because you went, oh, was... that one looks the coolest? No, I literally just picked a random one as well. <laughs> Good lad. I like the idea of picking random. I, I do like that a lot. I just go, so imagine, wait, imagine my dad's arms are the pop comic thing. Yeah. Random one. Just won't even go pay attention. Uh, oh, Hulk. I'd like to imagine that uh, comics appear out of your dad. That would be great. He'd be really <laughs> handy to have around. <laughs> to hey dad, I'll pull one out your arm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, here. Look, I got Tokyo Ghoul for him. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? It'd be a very cheap <laughs> way of doing it as well. If you could make that happen, Chris, that'd be great. If you could turn into a comic dispenser, that'd be fantastic. And then... Yeah, no, I'm not saying it. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Please, come on. You've read, too... You've read so much. It could happen. Like you spit out the words of the comics. Well, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe the suggestion there is maybe, maybe we write a comic. Could we write a comic? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's for a, maybe we workshop that on a future episode. <laughs> we try and write a comic live on air. I, I, I feel that may not work well. I feel, I feel it would be dark, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I don't think the heroes would do very well out of uh, a story that we come up with, so. There will definitely be swords. Yes, yes, actually, you do love a sword, don't you? There'll be blood. Yes. Oh, God, yes. There'll be violence. Yes. There'll be swearing. Most probably. <laughs> yes, yeah. What about so, things like that? Like, I mean, presumably most of the stuff that you see um, is, let's say, age appropriate. But um, I think some of the things that I quite liked was um, when I started to get into maybe the more grown-up comics when I was a bit younger, because... People just thought they were comics. Like, you ever have you got any sort of temptation to sort of read more of the horror stuff or, or something that might not necessarily be the stuff you should be reading right now? I want to like, like watch or read it, but my dad's like, nope. nope. Yeah, you know, my mum. My, nope. That's not my, um, yeah, there, is, is, not, there is it, the book of it though. It, yeah, it is a is a proper book. It's a over thousand page novel. I will say, though, you don't stand alone on that. My niece, who I think is about, well, 
is certainly quite a few years older than you now, but I think when she was only about two years older than you, she got really fascinated by the idea of it and she really wanted to read it and she really wanted to watch it as well. I, I don't know if it's just the clown thing, but yeah, she was in the same boat. She got obsessed with it. She still yeah. hasn't seen it to this day or read it though. So, uh... Yes. No, but say, obviously something like a Deadpool comic, because technically, you know, you shouldn't be reading Deadpool because it has swearies. Or The Crow, or The Walking Dead, or, you know, something with zombies and monsters and stuff like that. Yeah. And like Tokyo Ghoul and stuff. So, like, that's well, that, an well, that was one of the reasons why I kind of said it, because like Tokyo Ghoul obviously is about um, humans eating humans. Um, but is that kind of an attractive thing? Because it certainly was when I was a kid. I mean, we did. We, Chris, you and I probably did it more with movies, didn't we? Yeah. Like, we wanted to watch the movies that we weren't allowed to watch, the uh, horrors that were for 18-year-olds when we were not 18 and, and things like yes. that. Yeah. But, so we will take now the top three comics that you've ever read. Starting with? Number three. Number three. I'd say probably, hmm, I'd probably say Sword Art Online. I, the main reason was I first watched the, I first watched the anime of it, which I really enjoyed. And then I saw there was a manga of it slash comic. And then I was like really into it. I really wanted to read it. Seem, and seeing as I really enjoyed for like the first and second and third and fourth and fifth series of um, Sword Art Online, <laughs> I really wanted to read it. And I don't, there's only one season of um, what you can actually read, which only gets up to season two, but it's still, it was still really good. Um, Like with you, you'd probably like it since, guess what? Swords. Swords, yeah, I was going to say. And blood and swearing and violence. This, this sounds like the perfect uh, anime and manga for you, Chris. It's got swords yeah. in it. The end. Swords and swearing and blood. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be honest, you could have stopped at swords. And monsters, that, that and cool. monsters which they have to kill. Um, I've never watched it or read it. I'm, I do know of it, though, because I know there's some Funko Pops of it that, I, that I've seen, but I don't actually own any of them. But, um, but yeah, it's certainly one that's on a very long list of things that I figure I might I might watch or read one day. But, yeah, I really like it. Mm -hmm. Number two? Number two. Scott Pilgrim. I really... I... <laughs> I... Can I tell you the story, the long-winded story of how I got Scott Pilgrim stuff? Go for it. So, I had £10 of pocket money. I bought number one. I read it at a cafe. I really liked it. My mum said, would you like it for, I think it was Christmas? Yes. Yeah, it was a Christmas. My mum got it, yeah. And that's, that's the one at mine. And then my dad got me it as well. Because you'd read Sarah's copy of two, one, two, and three. Yeah. So then, you, so then you bought me the set, and now Sarah's got the the other set, and now I've got, I've technically got two sets, but one Sarah's. But so what is it that you like about? I it? really like it because they've tried to make like. They tried to make like a boy who's a superhero, but he's basically trying to disguise as human and loves dating young younger girls than him. <laughs> yeah, that, like, is, that like, is the I, only... I, when, when I was in year four, I dated a year two. Yeah. And when I was in year five, I dated a year three as well. And... You are. You are our version of Scott Pilgrim. Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> well, Maybe. One of the things I, I mean, I love it. I love Scott Pilgrim and I love the movie. The movie. I haven't seen the movie. Oh, it is absolutely amazing. It, it slightly, I will warn you, it slightly changes a few bits of the story, but it's still uh, absolutely amazing. But, and one of the things I really liked about it is that um, it, it felt like, uh, I mean, obviously the, the way it was published, it felt a little bit more like a manga, maybe than an American um, comic book. But you're right, it had the kind of young guy, every man. He, there's loads of music references in it. There's loads of video game references. And I think it piled yeah. so much pop culture stuff into it that there was just, 
a lot and I thought he did it really well as well like it wasn't it felt like someone who loved music and play and loved video games was writing this rather than someone who was pretending to love video games and music um but yeah I'm a big fan of Scott Pilgrim and, and good lad for having that as your number two <laughs> and numero uno Harley Quinn mainly the greatest hit stuff seen as earlier I said I really enjoyed it I love how they've done like like they done in there they done issues from like older stuff in it so i really liked it mainly because they done like they in it they done like some suicide squad stuff some other like loads of like separate things but then they put them all into one which i really liked seeing chris as- how yeah. far did it go back does it go back to sort of like some of the early appearances of harley like when they yeah, introduced her it, into the comic book yeah it has because obviously she was originally created, obviously for the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it has a couple of like first issues sort of stuff. Um, some of the Suicide Squad stuff. Um, some of the there's like some of the the, the big the bigger hit stories with like Batman and things. Yeah, I was gonna say, does it lean into some of the Batman stuff? So do you get like the wider cast, or is it mainly just Harley yeah. and stories? Um, it's up. To the point when she's still with Joker. When okay. we're not at the point where they've in canon split them up and let Harley go be free. They're just about to though. Yeah, I mean I think the last ones are sort of some of the bits where you start getting her question. And like when Joker sends her off in a rocket and tries to kill her. And yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, the uh, the joys of the wonderful relationship of Joker and Harley. As it says on the back, love makes you do crazy things, and that is very true in that, that case. I think I think we can all we can all attest to that. We've all done some crazy things in our time for love. Haven't ever fired anyone off in a rocket though. Well, to be fair, I haven't done I, that. I tried to buy a girl for twenty quid, <laughs> and then they said I'm not worth twenty quid. I'm, I'm not sure whether that counts as love. Um, <laughs> That, that, that's a I loved transaction. them and they didn't like me, so I went and went, be my girlfriend and I'll give you 20 quid. And then oh. their mom took the money well, and, I didn't get, and I still don't have it. Should have asked for a receipt. <laughs> don't, don't try and buy people. That's the moral of this story, ladies that- and gentlemen. That is a pretty good moral as well, I think, to uh, to go with. Don't try and buy people. It probably isn't. Uh, it probably won't end well generally. But as you say, love makes you do crazy things. Yeah. So before we uh, finish for the for the evening, what or is there any books or comics or current characters that you want to read? More carnage stuff. Seen as yeah. I have the one issue. More Batman stuff, and I haven't read any Joker stuff, I don't think. Other than maybe like a few things. But I really want to read some Joker stuff as well. Do you know there's a whole shelf of stuff right for Yeah, now. but main the main things I want to read is manga and anime stuff. Any any particular um mangas? <laughs> so other than Tokyo Ghoul, because obviously that's the set you're reading at the minute, but is there any other um ones that you've looked at and went, oh that looks interesting or I, I haven't seen the I've read no, I've um watched the stuff for One Punch Man, but I haven't read any of the stuff. I've heard that One Punch Man, the, the first season of it is supposed to be really, really good. Yeah. Um, it's on my list uh, to get to. Yeah, I've watched one and two. They're releasing free soon, but I, but I, I know, um, I have a friend who has most of the One Punch Man stuff, but he doesn't, he doesn't have his copy of one anymore. So, and I can't find one. There's one, um, there's one called, uh, Spy X Family, which I know is the really big release at the moment in, um, in the anime side of it. And I think like the mangas are selling really well. It's not something that I've, um, watched, but I think that's probably one that you will either see on the shelves in Waterstone soon, if not already. And you might see some of the kids in the playground reading it. Um, 
I think like there's most of the manga stuff that I think I've ever gone to, I would say is the more grown up side, probably a few years off from you, like things like Battle Royale and um, something that we're about to venture off down the road on a Attack on Titan and things like that. But um, I think that's one of the nice things I like about mangas is that it, it, it covers so many different interests, so many different like kind of hobbies but also a massive age range as well you know yeah. there's stuff uh, from from the wee the wee little kiddies right the way up to um jaded old men like us chris <laughs> you're not that old how it, well, old are you like 38 39 i don't think we say that on camera although we probably i'll probably leave that in because that'll be fun <laughs> dad would you like to have your age breed up together the good thing is, Will, is that like uh, what I will do is I will bleep it out, but I'll replace it with something that's got about twenty years older than that. So uh, he's no, I'll, I'll put him in about like fifty-seven or something like that. <laughs> what about you? Um, um twenty-one. <laughs> what about me? Um, right. You're you're about nineteen. Lower. What? Never. Lower. Never. never. If, you're, if, you're like, if you're lower than 19, how do you always buy the beers when we go to the pub together? I don't buy beers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, I don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, right. <laughs> Anywho. Yes. So, I would like to thank you, Will, for giving us a kid's perspective. So would I, mate. It's a pleasure to have you on. Anytime um, when I'm on and, uh, and we'll source you some more carnage and Hulk and things like that down the way. We'll we'll find some stuff that uh, you'll probably like and, and get it to you somehow. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. So, next time will be a deep dive into Frank Miller's Daredevil. And not for the kids, that one. Not for the kids, that one. No, no, not so much for the kids. Um, but I, I feel that might be quite a feisty episode. Really? Well, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, I'll get my dukes up already. I'll put a bit of a fighting background behind it. Because, <laughs> yeah, as, as I said earlier, um, I'm not uh, seeing it in the, the same level that everyone else seems to with that. Yeah. But it will be a fun one because they yeah. usually are when we have a bit of disagreement about stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, weirdly enough, like, the stash is, is often our happy place, isn't it? Like, more often than not, we're just going, yeah, everything's brilliant. We love everything. Um, so it is nice every now and again for us to not be 100% on the same page about everything. Ah. So, as you would have known by this point, we're not where we used to be. We are on Pop Culture Productions. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that youtube -y stuff. And... <laughs> On here, you will find Pop Culture Reacts. Yes, we're bringing back the reaction videos. Of course we are. Yeah. Because I've got a Ramstein video that I still haven't watched yet. Yes. Yeah, I haven't watched it either because of that. I, I figure we'll react to it at some point. So I really do want to get to that. Because uh, after that... Am I going to react? Yeah. Not straight away. Oh. Maybe well, next time. Well, and, and like, and as I say, I think there's, um, we're always looking for suggestions on the reacts as well. And uh, yes. I will kind of pop up at the bottom um, about following us on Twitter and join us on the Facebook group where you can speak to us. Um, but also that's where we'll try and source stuff like this from, from you guys, because it's nice. I think we probably will on the reacts do maybe some like particular artists, but it is very nice when we get to experience something totally new and it's something that you've picked that you like. So um it, so yeah, yeah, join us on the things that are going on down there right now. Yes, because I said with with this, obviously there are certain fans that we will be jumping all over. We don't need we don't need suggesting or pushing towards them. We're doing them anyway. Yeah. I'm starting ghost. Metallica. Yes, if Metallica released anything new We'll Run the jewels, Tyler the Creator. They're all they're they're yeah. on my they're all on our list for when they release. We'll we'll jump on them. But but also making a return, but in a very 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 different new format. Show and Tell Tunes is back. Um, it will be me doing uh, album reviews, um, gig reviews, bits like that. 
um with i think reviews i think reviews in general though like um and i can't i, I can't wait to uh for you to sort of start dropping them but i think also it's something that i'm quite interested in doing i think we'll i'll start hitting up some tv show reviews and some movie reviews bits and bobs that i've watched along the way i am going to try and keep it to stuff i've liked i'm not going to try and review everything um because again i'm all about positivity these days until um i decide i'm not and then i'll just moan for about an hour about something but um but but yeah, I think I think reviews are something that where or something where both of us are quite kind of interested in in, in doing a little yeah. bit more of, aren't we? Yeah. So with that, obviously it won't be what Show and Tell used to be. Um, but yes, a Show and Tell is coming back. Um, and also in the works, coming soon, some TW and some pops. And anyone that wants to join us and has suggestions or ideas for shows, then get in contact. We yeah. can see what we can do. Yep, yep. We've, I think we've said this on our Facebook group, which you should join, which I'm hoping I've got a little ticker tape underneath saying that, is that <laughs> it's not like we're the world's biggest experts at this. You can see we're fudging our way through it, but I think we find it really fun. We find it fun talking about stuff, and we are happy to help anyone um, get up and running on this stuff. But also, we're happy to have people come along and have a chat with us. Because we like talking. And have very opinionated opinions on all sorts of shit. Yeah, yeah. There's not much we won't try, is there? Exactly. But until next time, from Daredevil, remember, like, subscribe, and watch the old episodes back. Go on. Click the bell notification as well. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> so I do do all the other YouTube spiel. You you know it more than I do. Like, subscribe, and click the fucking bell. I think we might clip that bit out and have that as our end point for every single time <laughs> we're seeking subscribers. Yes. Until next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>